now I have the opportunity to open it up to questions from honourable members. Uh, Mr. Beecroft. Um, you consider as an MLC that you should have a vote on matters that are policy matters and financial matters and would you take the position in a department? Okay, well I'm going to open that one first to Mr Ferner and I get two minutes for, for answers for members. Thank you. Um, yes, I do think that it's appropriate that we should be voting on financial matters and yes, um, I would be interested in working in a department and I think that it's proper uh, that LegCo members should be able to work in departments. This is Lord Bennett. Um, I think, um, I might be wrong, but I think that um, it's already been decided that um, LegCo members wouldn't vote on things like taxation and appropriation. I think, you know, I might be wrong on that, but for the policy matters, I think that there, there is a role of that, because that's one of the areas um, that an MLC can come and play a role in Tingles, which is different to their LegCo role. And that's one of the scrutiny functions, just through specific ways, um, questions, motions, but perhaps much more importantly, um, the more important than making decisions about policy is the role um, that through the scrutiny committees that you can look to have a look at implementing policy and, and play a scrutiny role there. Um, in terms of departments, um, yes, I would be in a department. Tyndall has debated that and it's decided that MLCs would still have that position. For me, I see the value of being in a department is the chance to have some insight. You have a role in taking the legislation through LegCo, so you've got a background there to the, 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 everything that went on beforehand. Um, and also within a department, you've got a valuable chance to be uh, a bit of an independent voice within the department, perhaps be a, perhaps be a sounding board. Um, and just offer that, that uh, bit of an impartial view. And then what you might get then at LegCo level, if you've got members being in a department, you know, it would add to the improvement of LegCo because you would have a broader skill set and you know, broader, broader range of thought and, and specialism. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Kelly. Yeah, I think it's a great question because it goes to the kind of heart of the governance framework that <coughs> is the bicameral system or tricameral system, if you take that view. And I think we have slightly confused systems, slightly schizophrenic in the sense that uh, if, the up, if, you have, if you argue for an upper chamber, then the upper chamber is there to provide check and balance. If it's therefore also voting on policy and can implement change at the lower chamber, then again, the, the, you have a slight issue. Um, so I think you're in a very difficult position voting in situations voting against the lower chamber if you take a different view, um, partly because of the way you're elected, but partly because of the system. However, in the unlikely event that there was some extreme vote by the lower house, well, the purpose of an upper house is to kind of moderate the lower house. Um, so in extreme circumstances, um, then there is a you could be a scenario where you did vote against the, the lower house. Let's say you wanted to wage war on Ireland or something of that nature. Yeah, but ordinarily no. Um, as for the um, as for the department issue, again, if you come back, you have to understand what the purpose of LegCo is. If the purpose of LegCo is governance, um, then if you take the parallel to corporate governance, you wouldn't have a supervisory board or governance board involved in the executive in any way because that would be a conflict. Uh, it will be a conflict of the supervisory role that an upper chamber or a supervisory board would, would play. Um, so I think it would be very difficult um, to be in the department and maintain that independence. Now I hear arguments that say, well, you, you can learn a lot in an apartment and you can help. And I, doubt, I don't doubt those to be true, but I think they, if you're in a hierarchy of decision making, then they get trumped by the independence and supervisory responsibilities of LegCo. Thank you. Mrs. Uh, um, in an ideal world, um, no, I don't think that the Legislative Council should necessarily have a vote on financial um, matters, um, particularly in relation to the budget, because they're not um, directly ele um, elected by the public. Um, I think that there is a lack of democracy in that. Um, I do believe that in a separation of, of powers between scrutiny and government responsibility, <coughs> Um, and I, having spoken to a number of people in the previous administration, 
and they also feel that, that well, a number of them feel that um, there have been some blurred lines um, between what an MHK would do and what an MLC would do. Um, so in, I understand when um, Liz Vane said you know, that perhaps one minister, one member to a department, that's not practicable um, in certain departments like the Department of Health and Social Care and certainly not in the DOI either. Um, so I understand that um, you know, making use of MLCs would make sense in that way. However, what I would um, suggest is a compromise in having a non-executive member almost of the Legislative Council um, that would work within LegCo's remit entirely in, within LegCo's remit, so um, sort of taking legislation through. Um, as a helpful friend to the department as opposed to actually being a full departmental member. Thank you. <clears throat> Mrs Court. Thank you. As far as um, voting on financial matters, I tend to support Mrs Hummels here in that um, MLCs are not voted in by the general public and therefore I don't think it's appropriate that they should be voting on financial matters such as taxation, etc. With regards to the departmental role, I think my initial view was that that could impact on the impartiality of a member and that perhaps that would not be the right way forward. But I have given it more thought and I do feel that perhaps the role of the MLC is more akin to that of a non-executive director who actually supports the executive directors in certain areas and I think I look to the executive directors to the MHKs and I believe that in perhaps taking up a role within a department they can bring some guidance and some structure perhaps to um, which would be a benefit uh, to the department and so I would be willing to take a role there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Chuckman. Um, I'll answer it in reverse if I may. Um, regarding um, being in a department, yes, I'd be happy to be in a department if it was felt that I could add value and would be useful in that role. I also think from the perspective of the general public, um, from a value perspective, um, if you're actually actively involved in a department uh, and you're more involved in government, you're actually providing greater value for the general public. Um, as regards voting, to my mind, we're working with the system as it is at the moment until it's actually changed. So, yes and yes. But I can see the difficulties attached to having a vote on financial matters when we're not an elected uh, body by the, um, by the electorate.